So we're back. So let's do the first step to launch the uh, the the last simulation. So read the case. Okay, in my case, uh, I'm reading the just to show you the fine mesh, the last one corresponding to the last. Okay, so there we only have the case set up. So just to go through this again. Remember, scale, uh, less and this simulation, these are scale resolvent simulation. So everything is transient. So as you go into models, you go here. The only thing that we need to, to change will be the viscous model. Okay, so in this case, I'm using the wall, uh, but there are many, there are a few different actions of methods that we're going to address each one later in the theory. Then materials, boundary condition, nothing changed. And actually, just contrary to you might think that probably less or difficult to set up. It's very easy to set up, okay? We don't need in boundary conditions, we don't need to give any information about uh, turbulence intensity or K epsilon values. Those values, we are not resolving. Unless you have a specific less models that use the K equation, you are not resolving. So they're very straightforward to set up. The main difference is that, is that as they are scale resolving, you need uh, fine meshes, small time step to resolve on space and time, okay? But the setup is very straightforward, okay? It's not complicated. So nothing new here. You set up all your monitors. We go to the method. So remember that we address this one, but you have the pieces in non-iterative time advancement. Okay, but when the main difference here, when you go to uh, less method, you need to have high accuracy. So see that you have a new method here, bounded central difference. So this is, and then you have pure central differences. This one is very accurate, but will be probably a little bit oscillatory. So it's recommended to use this bounded central difference, difference. This by default is not available in RAM's method. It just becomes available when you go into scale resolving simulations where you need uh, high accuracy uh, and robustness in your solution. Again, see for the transient simulation, we go bounded second order implicit. And you have here two formulations. You can go for the uh, segregate the iterative or you can go from the uh, non-iterative uh, time advancement. It's up to you to choose. Okay, we are going to run with the normal one. In controls, nothing to change. You have all your report probes, residuals, the standard values are okay. Uh, convergence criterions, this we don't need it in on the steady, so it's inactive. And now we can run, but to run, we need to read the solution. So you can initialize from scratch and then maybe you can add uh, you, you, you can add a perturbation or you can read a, a solution. So let's read a solution, interpolate, okay? And read interpolate data and just find any of the data that you can then load from this side. So here I have interpolation files so we get this one. So I'm reading this data, which now is available. I can use it to keep running. So if I plot my solution, uh, Okay, so let me draw, show you display, display. Okay, why do I have the background there? Okay, for some reason it's plotting also the mesh. Okay, draw mesh. Okay, ta -da. okay, so I don't find the why it's plotting that. So I get these three planes. And okay, I left that enabled somewhere. Okay, but uh, we have everything, and at this point, I can press here. And I can run. So let me run just 10 iterations. And this is that we are already to go and, and do our, well, our, our scale resolving simulation. At this point, we'll be just waiting. So remember that the first iterations, they are a little bit more time consuming. Okay, so as you see here, they will take more time to converge. But as you keep progressing, the, you will have a faster convergence rate. Okay, so after 10 iterations, we have this. So see that in this case, it's keep iterating. So see at the beginning, it's just over and then keep fast, fast and fast. So we're about nine iterations converted, but probably you let it run a little bit more and, 
it will get faster. Okay, so plotting the solution, see that now we have here our fields, velocity fields and so on. You can play, uh, you can plot everything. So you will have your Y plus values. Okay, drag, leave, forces, everything. And let me run, uh, and most important, remember, let me run uh, two iterations. That you need also CFL number, okay? So remember, this is scale resolving, so it's important to have a CFL below one, so see that it's being computed. Okay, so it's highly advisable to be below below one probably the maximum i can say that you can go for good accuracy is two but that doesn't matter you can go 10 20 whatever but you you will add too much diffusion so good accuracy below one probably maximum two recommend that usually 0 0.5 okay those are the best results that you can get but that's why less are computational expensive too so to get those different number your time set needs to be small then we come just to to the speech that wall resolving or wall modeling in this case it's wall mod modeling but as you go wall resolving and let me put there and as we know your tanks that depend of this cell distance the minimum cell distance let's say that usually will be close to the wall so that one will re reduce lower your time step so it will be more time consuming because you need to do more iterations so at this point you have this step the first step to keep running the rest is exactly the same but we're going to to go into some very specific sense about the different methods are also post-processing the data computing average but i already have the data pre computing so i won't go and run everything so it's the same data the time series that you have on the website so see you in the next tutorial and i hope you enjoyed this bye